Ow. Calm down. Bonjour, bienvenue dans cette nouvelle édition d'un apéro avec Moto Magazine. Tous les vendredis soirs, c'est votre petit rendez-vous. Ça parle culture, ça parle moto exceptionnelle. Aujourd'hui, on a une moto sympa, mais on a surtout une rencontre exceptionnelle. Je suis avec Lyndon Poskit. C'est peut-être quelqu'un que vous ne connaissez pas encore. Lyndon, c'est d'abord un passionné de moto, c'est un pilote et surtout, c'est un aventurier, un explorateur. Il a passé plus de 5 ans sur la route, visitant un paquet de pays. Et on va lui demander en anglais, on traduira. Euh, Lyndon, you are first passionate about bikes since you are like 10 years old. Yeah, I've been riding motorcycles since I was 10 years old. Many different disciplines, trials, supermoto, motocross, road racing, enduro, um, all of it. And just more lately, I've been doing a lot of rally riding and that's what a lot of people know me for. Uh, I've been adventure riding for 15 years on many different bikes. I started adventure riding on big bikes, uh, so it's kind of gone round circle and I'm back on the middleweight bike now. Let's start from the beginning. At 10 years old, your father offered you a trial bike, and it's how you discovered the balance, the freedom. Yeah, and I must say, starting the motorcycle adventures in my life on a trials bike was the perfect thing to do. Uh, because it gave me the opportunity to learn all about balance and braking and more importantly control and being safe on a bike and this is the thing my parents were really strict about they didn't want me to have a motocross bike uh, because broken injuries and bones and everything they said once you've proved to us that you can control a bike safely you can stop it and control it and be in full control then you can have whatever motorcycle you want and mm -hmm. Uh, it took me five years and it was actually five years and then I won my first championship on a trials bike and it was shortly after that then I transitioned into off-road bikes. Okay. So your, your father, your family was a biker family? Actually no, um, my father was into four wheels and rally driving uh, and I was always into motorsport but I just, I used to watch Supercross on the television and I just had a thing about off-road motorcycling and when I first saw the Dakar rally at, around that time Um, when I was a kid, I, I used to just think how wonderful it would be to race motorcycles through the desert. So the Dakar was your inspiration and one day you said to yourself, I want to do a Dakar. And actually you made three Dakar, you finished the three of them, you did the most difficult uh, category, which is Malmoto, which is basically you don't have any kind of real support. And you did some top 10, uh, top 10 specials, yeah, actually. Right. Uh, how was it to do the, the Dakar? Yeah, it was, a, it was a dream, really. I never thought it would come true, though. It was only after I became a I'm an aerospace engineer, and when I was in my job, you know, eventually I got to the point where I thought maybe it will be possible to afford to go and do the Dakar Rally. And uh, I did my first Dakar Rally in 2013, and I took my father as a mechanic, which was fantastic from a family perspective. Mm -hmm. um, Uh, I got a top 10, 10 stage finish on my first Dakar rally uh, and I finished in the top 50, 46 overall and finished successfully and safe, that's the most important thing. Uh, and I actually didn't think that I would go back again. Mm -hmm. I thought, that's it, I've ticked the box, I go do some other things and I started to travel around the world. But then when I got to the Americas and the Dakar rally was in South America and I was traveling through South America, Uh, I had this crazy idea to ride to the start of the race and do another Dakar rally and then continue traveling on my adventures. And that's why I ended up doing 2017 and 2018. And I did both of those Malimoto really to try and um, really up the level from what I did when I did it with a mechanic and everything, make it more challenging for me as an individual um, and just make a better story for people following. I had a huge mm. following on social media and I thought it would be cool to share the experience. So you said you were, you were an aerospace engineer. Did you design planes or wings or rockets yeah. or what, what did you do as you, in your job? Yeah, I worked in military aircraft for 17 years for BAE Systems. I worked all over the world, so I worked all over Europe, worked in the United States, Saudi Arabia, mm. uh, UK predominantly, always on military aircraft and always on ground testing, so testing the aircraft before they went into first flight. Mm -hmm. I worked on various platforms. I really enjoyed it. I'm an engineer. I love the engineering, mm. um, but my passion was motorcycling. So one day you said, that's enough. I don't want one of my planes to crash. I just quit the job and I'm going to be, how do you call yourself, an adventurer, an explorer? How do you define yourself? You said, I'm yeah. selling everything, I'm getting a bike, and I'm getting on the road, yeah. off-road, for 
you wanted to do the world in one year, one year and a half. Yeah. And actually, it got worse. Yeah, my plan was to ride around the world in a year to 18 months. Um, it ended up being five years and two months because uh, I, I am an adventure rider. I'm, yes, I've done a lot of racing and I've raced the Dakar Rally, but I'm not a professional racer. I'm an adventure rider and my whole... Um, rally racing career came from adventure riding, long distance adventure riding on big bikes uh, and that's what I love to do and the Dakar Rally just gives you the opportunity to ride massive long distances on big adventure bikes mm -hmm. um, without stopping and that's what I loved so that's how I got into it. Um, but actually my quitting my job and my career uh, in aerospace and going travelling on a motorcycle actually came about because I had an accident running a marathon and I nearly lost my life. I was in hospital and while I was in hospital, I just figured that I spend all my time working and I don't have enough time to do the things that I really love doing and that's riding motorcycles. Mm -hmm. so. And you said the most difficult decision was basically to say, okay, I'm going, I'm leaving my normal job, my normal life, now I am on the road. Yes, so if anybody that asks me what was the hardest part of the five years traveling, I say, actually, it was making the decision to go travel in the first place. So what amazes me, you've done 74 countries, 70 countries, and also you've done 265,000 kilometers on a single cylinder KTM with no major mechanical issues. Yeah, I did it uh, 256,000 kilometers. Uh, all on single cylinder KTMs uh, and mechanically wise, you know, I prepared the bike myself, I built the bike myself. Um, I didn't have any major failures, the only problem I had a gearbox problem in South Africa which meant I had to rebuild the engine and I did a refresh after 100,000 kilometers and put new piston rings in and upgraded some parts but honestly as long as the preparation is done properly and you take care of these things, they are really capable bikes. And what amazes me, you said, some people tell you it's dangerous to go around the world, and you say, no, people are around the world, and basically you have no major issues about safety or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I had one or two moments which were really sketchy and probably dangerous, where, but where? Uh, in Africa, one in particular, but like, you know, Really, it didn't change anything about my trip, and I would go and do the whole thing around the world because I firmly believe, like, all the negativity you see on the news is like a very, very small part that happened in a very tiny place in the world. Mm -hmm. The chances of you being there when this is happening is mm -hmm. so small. Mm -hmm. uh, we really shouldn't think about the things that you hear and the negative things. We should uh, really make reasons why to go and travel because mm -hmm. for me, uh, the, those five years traveling around the world were the best years of my life. You said you, you've been traveling basically on a budget, you're sleeping in a tent, you eat cheap food, and also you want to say it doesn't cost that much to be a traveler and adventurer. How was your budget? Yeah, actually, a, a key fact is that it cost me less money to travel around the world than it did to live and work. And pay your rent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. When I, I rented my house out and I sold all my assets to pay for my world trip, um, but I only spent on my world trip all the travels, every cost included, around 20,000 euros a year. Yeah. It wasn't that much. Yeah. Um, and that's really surprising. You can really do it on a, on a budget and still enjoy it. Mm. Um, but the moment you start to stay in expensive hotels and luxuries and everything, mm. for sure it's going to mm. triple your cost. So you didn't miss any kind of comfort did you not feel sometimes alone or just the joy of taking the road every day seeing new landscapes new people is better than anything i mean i definitely felt lonely i did it on my own and definitely felt lonely occasionally but i was always rewarded one hour later with an amazing place to ride or i met some amazing people um, and i think the you said about missing luxuries you know i was offered so much by so many people around the world to make it more enjoyable mm. uh, and I still say today that it was the people that mm. made my adventure. I met so many fantastic people on my adventures. Um, yeah, would I do it all again tomorrow? Yes, I'd go traveling again tomorrow but as far as my world trip and traveling around the world non-stop and doing it the way I wanted to do it with races and everything, I ticked the box and I did it exactly as I wanted to do it. So the, the concept was also doing so to places to do some races. You've done some incredible races like the roof of Africa in Lesotho, many more. What was the highlights of your racing experience? Uh, for me, I think the, the highlight 
we're facing what has to be the Dakar rallies because they're the they're the most challenging they're the most costly um, everything is on the line and the thing is at Dakar rally if you don't finish one day you're out of the rally yeah. so it's really important to set yourself up to finish the entire rally uh, and honestly to to have done three and to have finished them all feels really special because I think uh, the odds were against me especially in 2017 those that have seen my video will know um, I definitely did it the hard way and I wasn't prepared for it um, but I finished it and I'm a, I'm a firm believer that you know 50% of everything you do is in your mind yeah. you know men mental strength tell yourself you can do it and I think that's one thing that I would say to anybody is if you have any doubts about doing something unfortunately you won't, you won't. do it yeah. you've got to you've got to think positive about it and you've got to tell yourself that you can do it yeah. and you'll be amazed what you can achieve one last question uh, you've been to so many places any special place that you keep in your heart on your, your mind you talking you talked yesterday about namibia or um, other countries yeah there's so many different aspects of travel that i could reincite but uh, the scenery in south america in patagonia and utah in america blew me away mm -hmm. like really spectacular And then the experiences with different people and one thing that sticks in my mind was in Namibia, a very remote country, a very remote country in Namibia and um, meeting the Himba tribe, completely different culture. Mm. They live out there with nothing, you know, and it's just amazing to see these different people uh, and how they live in different parts of the world. Mm. Thank you, Lyndon. It's such an inspiration. One last advice for anyone who would like to quit their standard life and hit the road yeah just do it no <laughs> don't don't make excuses yeah. why you can't do something yeah. make reasons why you should do something merci pour ce message Lyndon, on aurait aimé en parler beaucoup plus mais le temps nous est compté merci pour l'inspiration euh, dites nous dans les commentaires où est-ce que vous aimeriez faire le tour du monde commencez par où euh, soyez prudent on se retrouve bientôt sur une autre émission motomac bisous sur le casque à très bientôt thank you Lyndon, for your experience on your traveling Thank you.